everyone, it's me, Miss McCrone. I'm really happy and excited that you guys are back for our second lesson all about animal life cycles. So today's lesson has been completely put into something called a Nearpod. It's a really cool program. I love using it in my classroom, and a lot of you may have used it in your classrooms as well. However, some of us may not be as familiar with Nearpod, so I wanna make sure I spend the first couple of minutes in this video making sure that you guys know how to log in. So the first thing you need to do is when you go to the RPS at home page, the lesson plan should have a link to the Nearpod homepage. When you click on that link, it will look a lot like this. All right, so as you can see right here, there are um, three sections in the middle of your screen, one for students, one for teachers, one for administrators. We're gonna focus on this one that says students. As you can see, it also says you need to enter a code in order to join this lesson. So the RPS at home website should have the code right there, right next to the link. Um, but in case you missed it, the code is M-L-E-U-A. So once you type that in, you're going to press this arrow and it should take you immediately to the first sign in page. So this is where you guys are going to put in your name. And um, if you're not comfortable putting your whole name, you can just do your first name. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just do your initials. Um, but I would really love for you to put in this second bar, which says optional. I would love for you guys to put in what school you guys go to. Because I think it would be really cool for me to see which schools are showing up and putting in the work on these awesome RPS at home lessons. I'll definitely give a shout out to the school with the most students. So once you've done that, you can press join session and it'll take you to our first page. So let's begin by reviewing what an animal life cycle is. All um, animals go through a life cycle. So what that means is any living thing goes through different stages or changes throughout its life. In this case with animals, usually we start with either an egg or we're being born as a baby. Then it develops into a young, in this case, a chick, which then the chick will turn into an adult. And then that adult will lay the egg again. Now, um, if you remember from our video on the first day, the pandas we saw definitely had a different life cycle than this chicken here. Um, for one, the panda did not lay an egg. And that's because there are so many animals out there. There are so many different versions of life cycles. So our focus for today is going to be first to be able to explain what a life cycle is, and then two, to extend what we've learned about life cycles into um, learning about some different animals and their specific life cycles, learning some different words and vocabulary that are very important, different parts, of different animals' life cycles. So those are the things we're going to focus on today. And in order to do that, the first thing we are going to do is watch this video on vocabulary. As you can see, the video is called metamorphosis, which that's an unfamiliar word to maybe a lot of you guys. So what I'm going to tell you before we watch is it's very important in certain animals life cycles. Metamorphosis is a really cool thing that happens, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Instead, I want you to try to figure out exactly what metamorphosis means when you're watching this video. Now, if some of you guys go through the link in the lesson plan, in order to watch this video, you may need to log in through Clever yourself, but everyone has an account in Flocabulary if you're an RPS student. So once you log in through Clever, you'll be able to watch this video again on your own. Now, while we're watching it right here in this video together, I want you to one, try to figure out what metamorphosis means, and then two, this is a critical thinking question. I really want you to try to decide whether or not humans go through a metamorphosis in our life cycle. And if you can't um, think about that, I also want you to think about 
maybe instead did the panda we saw from the first day did that go through a metamorphosis because as you see we're going to see actually other than this frog another example of an animal that goes through metamorphosis so i want you to decide if those animals either the panda or humans have a similar life cycle so i'm going to make sure we are all set to watch this video together Metamorphosis that me change. Rearrange and switch up the game. Some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect. Metamorphosis that me change. Rearrange and switch up the game. Some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect. I was sitting in the park watching a caterpillar. He had hatched from an egg a few days ago. He yeah. was sitting on some leaves. He was eating nonstop. Then I wondered where all that food goes. Hmm. Then I came back a week later and he got bigger and even shed layers of skin for real this is known as the larvae stage his metamorphosis was soon to begin okay so a few days later i decided to check back but i couldn't find where the caterpillar was at but i found a cocoon underneath the leaf i didn't want to make noise thought that he was asleep then my mom explained it was going through some changes inside the cocoon it does rearranging growing wings legs and even antennas this is the pupil stage no longer a beginner metamorphosis that me change rearrange and switch up the game some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect metamorphosis that me change rearrange and switch up the game some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect so a few days later i decided to go back that's when the cocoon began to shake and crack a beautiful butterfly flew out and landed on me he was now an adult what a sight to see Oh my gosh, I can't believe my caterpillar friend turned into a beautiful butterfly. There he goes. Bye. Me and moms love watching frogs at the pond When I noticed little animals were swimming around They didn't look like fish, but didn't look like frogs either She tells me they're tadpoles and like caterpillars Hatch from an egg like we already know And their only one job is to eat and to grow Tadpoles go through changes as they grow up I watched for a few weeks and it went as such They sprouted legs and their tails disappeared That's just how certain animals are engineered wow. Now they're all grown up, they are adult frogs They got to hopping on the land and the story goes on Metamorphosis that me change Rearrange and switch up the game. Some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect. Metamorphosis that me change. Rearrange and switch up the game. Some animals like frogs and insects change as they grow before and after effect. Change up the game. Grow and rearrange is a process known as metamorphosis. Start out as one thing and end up as another. It's a process known as metamorphosis. Change could be good. Change could be great. The same way we grow bigger from the things that we ate one way before and another way after like a book on to another chapter okay i don't know about you guys but i definitely learned a lot just from watching that short video now the first thing i noticed was they immediately told us what metamorphosis means so let's see if you heard the same things I heard. Did you hear them say metamorphosis means to change? Fish your brain if you did. Well, maybe you heard that metamorphosis means to rearrange. Fish your brain if you did. Maybe you also heard a third thing that metamorphosis means to start as one thing and then end up as another. Kiss your brain if you did, because all three of those things were really important in order to understand what metamorphosis is. Now, the second thing I asked you was, did the pandas we watched on the first day and do humans go through metamorphosis? Well, when I think about the examples in vocabulary, I noticed or saw that a caterpillar looks very different from a butterfly. So, when they say that the animal changes, they must mean that it completely changes or rearrange its body structure. And I think that's true too with a tadpole because a tadpole looks very different from a frog. So when I think about us as humans, I mean, we definitely look different than we did as babies, but 
the more I think about it, the more I realize when we were born, we had two eyes, two ears, a nose and a mouth. We also still had two arms and two legs, 10 fingers and toes, which means sure our body changed a little bit, but have we completely rearranged or the structure of our body where we're born as one thing and then turn into something new? No. So as you can see, humans don't go through metamorphosis, whereas butterflies and frogs do. And that's because so many different animals exist. So many different types of life cycles exist as well. So let's keep that in mind as we continue through our Nearpod lesson. The next thing you guys are going to do is create a life cycle of your own. So as you can see, I've changed to the next page, which is um, a really cool drawing activity. Now, drawing things is a great skill to have as a scientist, because sometimes when you discover something new, it's best to draw what you see instead of just writing down observations. So we're going to practice that here. The directions say to pick an animal and create your own animal life cycle diagram. So. As you can see, there are four sections on this diagram. They're already labeled one, two, three, and four. What you're going to do is use the tools down here at the bottom to color in an animal of your choosing. It can be anything. It could be a bug or a fish or a bird, reptile, mammal. It could be a human. Doesn't matter, you get to choose that part. And then what I would really love to see is if we use this cool text box to label the different stages as a baby or as an egg or oops, sorry about that you guys you guys get to choose what you want to label it but make sure that you try to label at least four different sections now once you've done that you need to press submit because I won't be able to see the awesome drawings that you create unless you press submit okay so once you do that you're going to see this new screen pop up. It says, click here to open a web page. Now, in order to um, do that, I need to show you guys the screen that's going to pop up. It's going to look a lot like this. And this is the third and final section. Well, actually, it's the third section. It's not the final section, but it's the third section of our lesson and this is where you're going to extend your knowledge of the life cycle a little bit more so as you can see there are four or excuse me three different um animals you can choose from: a bird a butterfly and a frog now birds and uh, butterflies and frogs we've already been very familiar with through our vocabulary video birds we saw a little bit of an example of a chicken which is the type of bird at the beginning but all three of these um have these really cool games click on press play, and then walk through each animal's life cycle. So the best thing about this is it will show you whether or not you um, correctly placed a certain stage of that animal's life cycle in the correct spot. So with this example, I'll show you how it's asking what comes first. Well, we know that eggs and a butterfly comes first. You'll know that you got it correct. It will show you a video of that animal's life cycle at that stage. So as we just saw, a butterfly was laying eggs. Now let's say I click the wrong stage to put in as what comes next. Let's see, if I click it and I put it in there, see how it immediately bounces back? That's how you'll know. You need to go back and check again because maybe there's a better uh, stage to put in as the second, okay? You can always go back to the home page and try the other ones as well, okay? So I really hope you guys enjoy that part of the lesson. And then here is the final stage of what we're going to do in our Nearpod lesson. And this is the one I'm really excited about. When you get to this last section, as you can see, you're going to be presented an open-ended question. And this is where you get to really reflect on things that you've learned, things that you've observed, out this lesson because I'm going to choose some students and their work to do as a shout out in my next 
video next week. So I'm really excited to see exactly what you guys have learned. I want to see what were some of the things you saw or observed throughout the lessons that were ended up being very important. Were there any inferences you made or things that you thought were going on that ended up being correct? Um, and then is there anything that you learned throughout this lesson? It would be great for you to go back to your day one observation journal and take a look at that wonder section. Are there any questions you had that you now know the answers to? I would love for you to fill in as much as you can here, and I will try to select about five students to do a shout out for next week. So when you're done with that, press submit, and then you'll see you're at the end of the Nearpod, and that's when you'll know that your um, Nearpod lesson with me is done. So I'm really excited to see what you guys do. I really hope you guys enjoy this lesson. I hope you learn a lot about animal life cycles. I can't wait to see you guys next week and keep learning. Bye everyone.